I have not seen it yet. It's a fishing boat. That um, gentleman contacted me, Ken. I'll let him tell the story, but I figured I'd turn the camera on as we roll up on it. Here she is hiding in the corner. Let him do his unveiling. We'll see what we got. Smile. <laughs> people can, can people. Hi. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is it. That's, yeah. You want to take that side? Sure. You want to roll it or? Ain't that a sexy thing? So, yeah, you, the mice got into the seat here a little you, bit. So you bought it 30 years ago, you're saying? Yeah. And what's the, what's the backstory on it that you... Well, I bought it off a guy. He bought it and then, like, two years after he got it, his wife had a baby. They had to get rid of it, so I bought it. So it was two years old when you got it? Yeah, it was, two, it was about two years old. I tried to keep it up as you know as good as I can, but just can't do it now. With the, needs a good washing and stuff. When's the last time it's been in the water? I'm thinking like maybe seven years ago. Seven, eight. Eleven is on the sticker, yeah. Eleven. Ten. Ten years. Ten years, yeah. It's been. It, most of the time when I use it, it sat six, seven years each time, <laughs> and each time. That thing she's fired right up third turn of the key. Do you did it get, get run out of fuel when it was put away last time, or do you know? Or? What I used to do when I put it away because I'd only go fishing for like two weeks with the guys every year. We it was like ten of us, and uh, I'd drain, I'd, I'd siphon the, the gas out of the tank and run the engine till it was empty. Now I can't, to be honest, I can't remember. I know I drained the tank, siphoned it, and put put it in my truck. But I, I don't remember if I fired the engine up. To get rid of it. Okay. Well, that'll make I, the... I'll be guaranteeing if the mice haven't eaten the wires, that this boat will turn over. Awesome. Well, well, that makes for the fun part of it, too, to see if we can make it run. Right, so. right. Exactly. Awesome. Ken, I really appreciate it. It's, it's very nice of you to uh, kick it our direction. It's got, it's got 150 horsepower on it. Um, it's got an all-aluminum deck. Most of them were, were marine plywood. This is all, all aluminum. This is, of course, if you want to help me take this out, we can. Okay. But that's a well, you know. And uh, it's got two live wells. The troller motor, 12 24 volt troller motor. I think that's the third troller motor I put on it because I just wore them out. Hmm. You know. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice boat. I hate to get rid of it. I really do. I really do. Well, but you can't do it anymore. If it, when I get it running, you're welcome to take a putt around the yeah. camp with it and uh, throw a line in the water. <laughs> that's one of the problems is uh, I'm not steady on my feet anymore. Yeah, and, and the boat's not and, the greatest you know, of. Uh, you know, it's not. Like, those, that's a brand new seat. That's a brand new seat. And when I seen that the mice got to this seat, I was going to buy two more of those and just mount them in here. Uh, to get oil injected. We'll pull the rest of that cover off and I'll turn the camera back on. All right. Go for it. Inside is oil injected. I don't, I don't know how big the tank is, but it holds a lot of gas. Oof. Oh, yeah. yeah. And these here, I just put them things in there to keep the mice out. They said that it would do, but you can't keep the mice out. And everything I pretty much drag home has the same issue, especially in our area. It's just yeah, so... Right. Right. I, I have a... Totally wire, wiring diagram of the boat from the manufacturer. And you said it had, what, two batteries for like the house battery or it the trolling motor? two batteries for the trolling motor. Okay. And, and then one over here for... Starting battery over there. Gotcha. Okay. 
Uh, well, you can use one battery. You, the solar motor will run off at 12 volts or 24 volts. Oh, cool. So you, you want to just put one. The batteries, they were junk, so I took them out. Kind of bilge pumps, huh? Well, they're not bilge they're, it's got two live wells for the fish. Ah, oh, gotcha. So two of them, one is for each live well. And then one below. And the other one, I installed that because I'd park it, we'd go camping for a week or so, yeah, and that way rained. if it rained at night, it would pump it out. Yeah. And, you know, but uh, <laughs> that's that. And then it's got, I don't know if you can, this is a storage area about the same size as that. Okay. These are your two live wells. Open them up. That's where you put your fish that you catch. Hmm. Okay. What's the biggest thing you've caught? Seven pounds. Seven something. Seven four or something. Like Is that, that Winnipesaukee or where'd you, where'd you go? No, that was, uh, that was in Massachusetts. Uh, I forget what lake it was. You get old, you forget everything. Hmm. <laughs> you know, and, uh, yeah, those are the, all the gauges. I see you go see what our, uh, yeah, I'll let you do the honors there and shake the camera too much. Got a wasp flying. We got wasps flying around. Oh, is there? Yeah, a couple of them just kicked out of the cover. Yeah, there's a the nest right there. Or is that, that's you put Brillo no, in I, there. No, I put stuff in it, try to keep the mice out. Gotcha. That's uh, steel wool. Yeah, there is, there is wasps flying around the back though. Yeah. <laughs> we may have to wait till we get home to go pop that off. Yeah, we'll let the 50 mile an hour wind. I, mean, I, I don't know if you can turn it with that. With the, with the propeller. If it will turn. That's good. That, it, it, we'll make that for... Uh, I, I'd almost guarantee this, this. It's not seized up or anything. Yeah, it looks like you took really good care of what you tried to do. Blocking everything out, keeping them out of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You said I just can't do it anymore, you know. You said you got a steering cable that's broke or something. I, this is what this is what what I know of that's wrong with the boat when I parked it. Gotcha. The trim and tilt. Okay, there's there's three switches to put the motor up and down. There's one right here, there's one up front, and there's one on the thing. The one on the front and on the back won't tilt the motor back down. Now my friend had that. He had one, and he found out it was the solenoids. Okay. And, you know, to, to do it. So, okay, the steering cable. About 10, 12 years ago, I changed the short steering cable. Now I think the long one dried out. Okay. okay it's so just that, it's just tight and won't turn, or it's yeah, freewheel. When, when when you go, it, it's hard to turn one way. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like it's dry. You, you gotta turn it. It won't turn back by itself. You gotta turn it back. You know. And the the, the last time I used it, I noticed there wasn't a real hot stream coming out of the water pump. Thing. Yeah, I think it's the water pump valve might need to be replaced. And that that's about it. Cool. And whatever we find when we go to get into it this time for for sitting, the the, the body of it looks awesome. Yeah. It, I yeah, you, I, you know, I try to keep my stuff up as well as I can, and that's why I'm getting rid of it. I just, I just can't do it anymore. You know, my health isn't there, and my, you know, I'm not that steady on my feet anymore. But and, and you might find some other things, that, <laughs> small things that are wrong with it. I don't know. Well, that's what makes it interesting. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I, Again. Thanks, Ken. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll have this in the water soon. I got a pontoon boat that I ordered interior for. I'm still waiting on parts to yeah, show I've up. Seen it. I've seen <laughs> it. Got a little cabin yeah, so that's ready to go. That's where this will go afterwards. Oh, no, really.
Well, I definitely say it needs a date with the pressure washer. Knock a lot of the crap off of it. But I want to get the engine cover off and we'll see what is happening inside there first and whether there's critters or whatnot that are packed inside there. I believe it did have a fairly decent problem with mice and he took steel wool. Looks like he packed it around all the corners. So we'll go pop the cover off of that. Maybe get a battery hooked up to it so you can get the tilt to move up and down. I'm gonna get a battery hooked up to it. So let's get the strap out of the way if we can. That way you can open the hatches up. Let's see. That direction. Looks like we get a bunch of cables. Looks like on both sides too. So one side is probably the house batteries for the trolling motor and electronics. And the other one's just going to be for starting it. I would say we got two negatives and two hot. So I would say this is the 24 volt side which was probably everything I was set up for the trolling motor because the regular the rest of it is just going to be 12. Here we're on the other side. So we got a couple of grounds tied together and a bunch of hot stock tied together. Let's, um, she smells kind of musty. <laughs> Sorry, my alley. Definitely needs a pressure washing in here. You can tell where all the mice have been living. You see how dark. Shows up on this side. I got no light over here. You can see where all the, the paths were where the mice were running on it. Gas tank looks pretty empty from what we can see. And the bottom of it. It's could get a jumper pack or something. Just hook power to it so you can get something to come alive. You can look at the jumper pack right too, but I think what I might do, just so we can kind of get power on all these, I'm gonna go grab a nut and bolt for each one and kind of stack them together and crunch down on it. So that we're not trying to just grab them all with the yeah, the jaws of the plier. I do think I've upset a family of ants that was living in it somewhere. Running all around. Moving day. And hopefully nothing smokes. Let's go Put some power up to it. Let's see if anything comes alive. Not drawing any sparks. Let's go see if we can get any kind of the trim to work. It's kind of what we're looking for right now. It's got one right here. There you go. Doesn't go down though. Oh well, yeah. Let's get that little kickstand out of there. Oh, I set up there. That just kind of deteriorated to nothing, huh? It's been a few few days. And get that right off of there. See if we figure out there's another, might be in the front. Where would I? I know you're looking right at it, you're not telling me. Usually it's on the controller. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> trying to catch it on a good one all right let's see if we can get that cover off there my guess is someplace here this one should come off there's a latch underneath it or something there we go good evening a bunch of steel wool that he put in there to keep the critters out. Let's go. That. These guys just open up like doors on the side. Oh yeah. And yeah, we got critters. Something fell or something ran. <laughs> yeah, all that nest material in there. They, what they took out of the seat here is more here. <laughs> Smell it. Can we get those covers right off? Let me go pop you in the stand. There you go. Door number two. Mm -hmm. oh, that live one. <laughs> you just screwed that way. <laughs> they didn't scream like a girl. 
<laughs> I think I missed him on camera though. We go see if he's got any other family members. I'll back the camera up. Thing is, I don't want him hanging out in my garage, jumping into another car, you know? There's his nest. You would think he'd have family. I'm gonna go throw this right outside. Let's see if he did any damage. If he chomp marks on anything, you know? Wiring is probably the biggest issue. That and probably fuel lines. Yeah, most of the nest was here. Don't see anything yet. This is the area to be concerned. I think probably what we should do is hit it with a pressure washer. First. I don't know about getting out of the wiring wet, but it is a boat, right? How many times does it say work in a wet condition? I think the one shot maybe washing it down a little let's um i'm someone <laughs> someone decided let's go pull the plugs out of it real quick we'll we'll throw a little bit of oil in each cylinder just to give her some uh some wetness maybe we'll give her a bump with the key and see if she spins over for us This is fogging oil. Generally what you'd use that for is when you're putting an outboard away or any, any engine really, you would run it into the carb, into the intake, let it suck it in, you kind of like stall it out with the oil and it would coat all the components on the inside. That was a good shot, wasn't it? And then on the end, you would pull the plugs out and do just what I did now. But it's good enough to put it away. It's good enough to revive it, right? Want we'll to try bumping the key? See if we get any kind of crank out of it? Maybe we maybe turn that flywheel by hand. A little cover over the flywheel. It's the last one, last nut to take off. Let's see if we can give her a turn. She shouldn't have any compression, so we should be able to move it by hand. Damn it. As long as that works. Even comes with its own dish. Come on, baby. Ah, there we go. It turns fine. Got a spinner once all the way around. Looks like it's got notches to put a, a rope on for a pull start. I wouldn't want to try pull starting this thing. Nice, it turns. Wanna go throw a key in it? See what the starter does? If any other mice just like them jumping out of it. Wish one of you would go turn the key and I can go look for spark real quick. Well, we just go with a visual. See if that'll work for us. Can't see it. Can you? It's not a good window for me. not seeing anything. How about yourself? I'm going to move that around one more time, see if we can get her in a better window. There you go. No, I'm not seeing anything. I don't know if we have anything that is disconnected that would not allow it. Maybe the battery on the other side or, again, we got critters in this thing, so that did not help it. I would think it's down far enough for that not to be an issue. Choke work. Chokes work. Yeah, I don't know if any other kill switch that's on it. It's in neutral. Try one more time. 
There it goes. Now I saw it. <laughs> Did that have something to do with it? <laughs> now, now it's sparking. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to complain. I'm just glad it is what it is. Let's, for shits and giggles, put a little bit of dribble of fuel in each one of those and give it a quick fire because you want to. <laughs> you know you do. And a little for you, a little for you, a little for you, a little for you, don't forget you, and last but not least, you. That's just two stroke gas. Go throw those plugs in and the wires back on. Fire in a hole. Let's go bump up that throttle just a little bit. She'll cough and fart a little bit. I think that's good enough for now. I gotta go clear the air out. Yeah, I think we should just kind of go around with a pressure wash and kind of clean up all the crap that is just floating around in it just to even make it smell better because it does smell a tad rank. I would be not surprised if we got critter nests inside there. Plus, it smells just like old gas. I don't know if we have to get any more out of that tank. He says he drained it out. It looks pretty low, but we may need to uh, kind of poke our head in there and see if we can get whatever is left out of there. Maybe pump some fresh stuff up to the to the carb, carbs. This does have carbs, yes it does. So we could probably take, the fuel line's probably disconnected already, there it is, yeah, just a tad stiff. So we could probably get that to prime some fuel through it. And he looks like he put the carbs, you know, you disconnect the fuel from it and you run it till it dies. So there shouldn't be any fuel in the carbs. Hopefully it's not caused an issue. Check our throttles and stuff, everything seems like it moves good. Yeah, let me go finish getting whatever little bits and pieces I can get out of the way by hand and then uh, let's go throw a couple hundred gallons of water at this thing. As yeah, so you can fill up the milk crate with whatever stuff we find. Spare prop. Spotlight. Earmuffs for the motor. And we got an anchor. This is supposed to keep the critters away. I don't know how well it did. Anything else? Go check the other ones. Which way is a flip? Or does it? Whole thing? There we go. Yeah, got rid of a couple of those. Each one of them's got like mouse piss stains on them too, so. Or as far as cling free sheets detracting them, I'm not quite sure that's working very working out very well. Yeah, let's put her back up in travel mode. See how far it goes. It's pretty far.
definitely made an improvement. See a lot of black stains down there. I don't know if that's just the old oil deposits that got into the, the fiberglass. The same with over there. So I'm gonna go hit it with some bleach and we'll see if that improves anything. I'm sure it's not mouse piss or if it's just mold that's growing on there. So we'll give that a little shot. But I say 95% of it already came out with the pressure, pressure washer. Yeah, let's go give her a little bit of bleach. I see definitely it was black mold. I see it changing up in the, I don't even want to call those gunnels. It's really pretty nasty. And what I didn't get with the pressure washer. So I'm sure there's a bunch that's going to be behind there that I'm probably not going to get. But I just do my best to go soak any of the locations, like, you know, up behind the gas tank back in there. See how black that is, all that crap on the hose right there. Well, I hung it outside to dry for a while and it seems pretty good. It's dripping a little bit still out of the, uh, the drain. But I would definitely say it has improved about 90%. It's cleanliness. Bleach definitely helped a lot on things. So that would be more comfortable for us to see what's going on and to work on things and chase it. And just in general, it smells so much better. <laughs> so I can let it sit overnight. I'm going to go for a, a motorcycle ride. And we'll let stuff dry out and then we can get back on to uh, attacking the engine and dealing with some stuff and looking for mouse damage and that kind of thing. I do see some ch chomps and chewing on the top side and some other issues that we got to go address. But I'll see you in a minute. All right, it's the next day and it's bled out a little bit on the floor what was left in the hull and it looks pretty good so i think we should probably jump on to trying to get it to operate off of the fuel tank and start with a key that's kind of the general direction we want to go we got the work we got to go do but that's the primary plus i just want to make sure that before we put too much effort into something that the engine setup is good on it Might be a little hard for you to see. Everything's kind of just black or silver over here. But when I was pressure washing it, there's a tank right here. And there's an open fitting here. There's an open fitting here, here, and here. I believe that piece of hose just shattered and blew off there. That is the oil fill or the uh, oil oiling system, the oil tank for the uh, automatic oiler. And this is fuel. goes from here to here. So we're going to have to do a bunch of fuel line replacements. So let's get on that. We'll probably do the oil one first because when it's standing up, all the oil is starting to leak out of this bottle. I think what happens is there's a big tank under the deck. This tank, I think, has a float on it. And when it gets so low, it fills itself back up again from the other tank. That's just a guess. We'll uh, check that out later. But let's get some hoses on this and get some of these leaks buttoned up. At first, these look like tie wraps but they're not they're a they're a special kind it's just like stuck somewhere let's see if we can get them to pop and then reuse again it's got like a ratchet and there it is a ratchet in the center of it you just kind of close up on Don't even need tools. All right, so we wanted the one from the oil tank, which is right here, to here first. Actually, here to these two locations. It's gonna be a bigger piece of hose. Yeah, it just turned into dust. That connector we just went to nothing. Pretty much done. We're going to do all the fuel lines, I guess. And let's go see what diameter there is. I got a couple of different sizes of hose. Yeah, it's not going to make that one. And this one's even larger setup. I got some boat hose like you would use for a tank. 
Get that double. For a pressure tank. Yeah, that'll do us. We'll just go with that stuff. All right, let me go get some uh, cutters and we'll go clip some stuff back, run some new hoses. Yeah, you should probably do them all. would be the size that we need. Yeah. Just be a little generous on each one. A little on the long side. That's the oil feed. Here's the gas line we just did. Yeah, that top tank looks like it has an electric pump that you know, having wires coming out. Either it's going to be a sending unit telling it to put fuel in it, oil in it, or that one is one of the two. Let's try turning the key on, see if it'll fill that tank up. Because right now the oil level is just to there. And it has a big oil tank right there. So let's just see if anything happens when we, we flip the key to a run mode. Wonder if it has to be running. The man not liking us. I would say this would be the pump. Nope. That's the sending unit. I tell it when I give when it's full. So that's to be the oil coming in. And what feeds that? So that just goes right to the oil tank. And the oil tank looks like it runs off of pressurized air. So yeah, it's not gonna do anything. The engine's gotta be running for it to fill that up. But what we can do for now is we just dump some right in the top. We'll just put some premix in there and fill that up. Well, it's going to get some Yama Lube because that's all I have right here. Again, just enough to cover it so that once it runs, it should fill it up. Plus, we'll go be able to see if that part of it works. So now we got about three quarters of an inch in the bottom. And if that tank fills up, we'll know that part's working. And I'll get in there. You know, the tank on the bottom is more than halfway full. So, As far as gas is concerned, I know it's dark. I think there's a line right about there. Maybe shake the boat. Yeah. So there's a good inch of fuel. Actually, we're tilting a little bit towards this direction. Let's go get the primer bulb. So the fuel line goes out of here, up and around. And it has a primer bulb on it. That's for you to help to start get fuel going in the flow, but it's already disconnected. I wonder if we can get the end off of that. And we'll just go into a pail or something. We'll just let it kind of dribble out. Yeah, we can probably unthread it right there. Yeah, let's just work. Get the end off of there. Oh yeah. It's a good vintage. I don't know if I should be doing that. That is coming out of the fuel tank. And the fuel tank should have no oil in it whatsoever because this is a automatic oiler. So I don't know if that's just gas that has gone bad or gas that is, uh, somebody maybe put a stabilizer in. Nah, there's chunks in the bottom. <laughs> yeah, and water. It's a mess. Oh, we have to let that run. Well, it's a good thing we didn't try using that stuff, huh? What stinks is we're gonna have to try to figure out how to flush that tank then. I don't really wanna to try to pull that out of there, but if we have to, we have to. Uh, 
it's probably gonna have water in the bottom of it. I'm looking at that pan, there's, there's about an inch of water underneath the gas right now. I'll bring you back when it's done. Yeah, switched over. You see a little bit better? You see all that crap in the bottom there where that, whatever it is that's separate. It's acting like water. Dirty water. Again, this thing sat for 11 years outside, so the expansion and contraction of the fuel tank, drawing in moisture from the air over time. Might have done that. Let's see if we'll go pour off this one. Let's see what's on the bottom. Yeah, all that. It's like a dirty water. Nasty, huh? Yeah. Yep. It's all gonna go to the same place anyway. The trash. We have a uh, recycle twice a year in our town. I got just an old gas tank, an old um, boat tank, plastic tank. That I put old gas in it, and then uh, I bring it there, and they recycle it. That's how I get rid of it. Or my neighbor's car when they're not looking. Well, that's doing its thing. I want to get in to be able to at least peek at the tank a little bit. Looks like we got a vent right here. Let's go see if we could pop this hose off and uh, take a, a looky loo. That's not going to help us much. That's just the gas coming out. There's a sending unit for the fuel gauge. Possibly we can open that up if we need a, a bigger area to try to get in with rags. And the only other one's the fuel neck right here. So far as getting the tank out. Yeah, it goes, that's the problem is it goes so far, it goes all the way back to here. I guess if we take that out of the way, we can probably get it to slide forward. I guess we could do a little peekaboo. Let's go see what we got. Got a low bat. This thing has to have a light on it. There we go. Okay, <laughs> she's got to charge up. Well, I'm waiting for that to charge up so we can look in the tank. Let's go see what does what, if anything does. Anything light up? Something's making noise. Is that our bilge pump? So that's bilge. Alright. What does all this stuff do? Don't see any lights coming on. Maybe dash lights? Yeah. That's what it is. I think they're lit. It's hard to say. That's the most important one to me right there. I'm gonna go throw, I think if the lights came with it, we'll go plop them in their location. There's a, a bow light. A stern light that hooks up so at nighttime you go travel. I think they just kind of pop in. Oof, all I smell is bad gas. Yeah, where did that go? Right there. So one of them goes right there. You pop it in. It's a good idea to see what's working. I climbed up back. One thing that should work without having to mess the power on, hopefully, is the float. Let's go see if. No. We are not getting the bilge pump to work automatically off of that. I'm not sure if that comes off a different power source. There's no battery connected on this side. Let's go throw some power on this side and we'll see if anything else comes alive. Maybe it's not meant to draw off the, the crank battery and just off the house battery.
that's it. Let's go flick some switches. Front one's on too. We'll just click everything on. Don't need that. We have the rear one. It's working. Is that got a button? Kind of looks like a button to turn it on and off with. I don't see anything on this. Yeah, I got, not like it clicks. Kind of just have a bulb that's out. Actually, it should be, might be two different bulbs because there was three wires on it where the back one had two. Feels like I should have a switch that clicks on and off, but it doesn't hit the detent. Alright, we'll worry about that later. Let's go look at our fuel tank. by the fact that the camera lens eesh, it's really bouncing around there it was like it's sitting right in the, the liquid yeah I think there's still plenty in there that we didn't get is it wet? yeah so we Unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to go get that tank out of there. What I'd say first thing is that oil tank's gotta come out of our way. So whatever it takes to remove that. It's oil. Looks like it's just got a bungee holding it down. That's easily removed, huh? It's probably just so you can fill it outside the boat. Yeah. Had I known that, I would have done that for cleaning. And I'd say we have removed that, the coupler for the gas tank, and the wires off the sending unit. And it looks like we got three screws on each side holding the bracket down. We'll loosen that up and we'll see how that uh, tank wants to play once it moves forward to this, if there's enough to come out of the hole. Gas neck off the other side would be okay. I think this is gonna fight us though. I don't have anything. I already tried to sneak a screwdriver up alongside of it to try to get it to break his death hole, but I think it goes all the way up to there. I don't, and I don't know if on this side if we can. Can we just unscrew it on this side? And maybe let the whole neck go with it. Let's go try that. You know, sometimes when you're going at it. And you're just too dry. You need a little bit of lube up in there. He's happy again. Get that up far enough where. I got the gas cap loose, so I'm kind of able to turn the whole assembly. that if I don't have to. I'm gonna wrestle with that a little bit more. How about the right tool for the wrong job? 
We get a little frying on it. There she goes. Yay! Alright. One step closer. One side's got to come up first. There we go. We got her. Well, it's good. Got the gallon and a half still in it. That lovely crap. Let's go see what is in store. Oof. <laughs> I think we're due for another date with the pressure washer before we put that back in, huh? Yeah, look at all that crap. That's the whole thing it used to look like. We can get in there and kill the rest of that. Plus, uh, maybe while we're here, we can kind of screw around with that pump assembly and that uh, automatic switch and all that crap while it's out of it. We actually get down inside. Getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go see what's going on with that fuel tank. Let's get the rest of the gas dumped out of that and see if we need to go do some kind of purging. I could flip it up because actually you see the sludge kind of running down on the inside of it. Well, that needs a bath too. So I think I know what's wrong with the automatic bilge following the wires coming up. It had power that went right through that same strip with the battery that was all tied together. So that would have been direct power from the battery and just the end was broken off. So we could try putting power to that and Give her a little flick, see if she works. But I'm more concerned with... I don't know if I want to start washing this crap out of it now or start screwing with the gas tank. Which one would be a better option to chase at the moment? Well, not to pile on of things that need to be fixed. This is one of them. As far as it turns. <laughs> so if you look, one of the two steering cables is not moving. Yeah, you watch these two steering cables, you'll see one of them, the one closest to you wants to move, but the one that's further away is locked up solid. So let's unbolt, let's unbolt it right here, because again, this goes through the same area where the gas tank is, so if we're addressing stuff, we might as well continue on. Let's see if we can get this assembly out from where the motor bracket is and see if it's the cable or if it's bound up inside here. Look at that back one's unbolted, let's see what we get. So I think the motor seems free. Again, one of the cables isn't turning, so it's not gonna allow the steering wheel to turn. They, they kind of oppose each other. They go up around the rack and the steering wheel and come back around. Actually, it's two separate cables. So one pushes and one pulls. Let's go undo this, see if you can get this out of there and see if we can find where the bind is. A lot of times, usually they're right on the ends where you get them, but if they get to the point where they get a lot of water and rust in them and the little individual strands start breaking away, then it's done. Let's get something to hold that. The cable's moving here. That's actually a good sign, in my opinion. It means maybe the cable is moving. 
would be nice if it's <laughs> careful what I wish for, right? My might be a total bear to try to get that out of the motor. No, so it's that part's moving and the cable's not. Have to work that out of there. Right? If this moves, then we know the cable's moving inside the harness. Yeah. I ended up disconnecting both ends. I want to see what we got happening. So I think. I think the cable works, but it's just sleeved. I think this goes in the, the ID of this and the whole thing's supposed to slide back and forth, but that is seized on that shaft. Kind of like originally what I thought was going on because we have no, no movement on there whatsoever. With all this apart, I can't even tap this to get this to move. So that is definitely what our, our issue is, that it's seized up. I don't know if there's, I would think I would have grease fittings there of some sort to be able to access. We should flip the motor up and see if there's any, you know, points that we can kind of get grease inside here. If not, I guess we can just shoot a bunch of lube. What's that right there? Nope. Might be one dead center in the middle right down there yeah let's go uh let's go put a screwdriver in there and see if that'll at least get it to spin a little so that's locked right up there it goes uh, that's just the end of it turning that's the end turning on there that's not turning all right let's go see if we can get a grease gun on there and we're going to try hammering some grease into that thing at least a little bit and then we'll spray a bunch of lube from each side this I think is the pivot. This is the knuckle or the bushing that the whole thing pivots on. So you can't take this apart without, you know, nothing supporting the motor. Can't if we have to, but. And unfortunately that grease fitting is for the knuckles that we just talked about for the motor to pivot on. It does not access the middle of that. I definitely think we are dealing with just a ton of crap and rust that's packed up inside that cylinder. So maybe we can get like an air gun and stuff, we'll start shooting in here and start shooting some lube up inside there. We can see if we can get whatever all this cakey crap is out of it. You know, plus that's again, that's that's got 12 inches of that stuff packed in there. Yeah. It's got to come out somehow. I guess we'll try to get it to expose as much as possible. See it right there. Give us some room to work. Compressed air. I'm gonna try start with that. I feel little chunks blowing out at me. It doesn't show up on camera, but I'm getting pelted with crap that's coming out. Trying to capture some on a rag, but it's not happening. <laughs> Little rocks. A bunch of it down here. Almost like a sand, rusty sand. That is pretty stuck. So 
I'm not gonna be able to gain. I could probably take the nut off of this side right here. I don't know if they're gonna gain us anything though. We gotta get down inside. The, the cable's inside here. And it attaches to this end, but this is seized on all this crap. Probably throw some heat on it too, worst case scenario. Let's get that seal up and get a little bit in there. What if I could drive it? Either way. I'm going to get a piece of wood and we can kind of get, get a good whale on it. I will mark it with a sharpie. Just to give ourselves like a, a reference to if we're getting to move at all. Probably off, better off with a long piece. I can. Gonna crack the wood though. Hmm. Nothing goes here anyway, so we might as well crunch down on it. See if we can get a little bit of turn. You know, kind of make, want to make it do what that one does. It turns a little, man, it's a chalky, but that may help us as long as we can get some movement out of it. It's freeing up quick as we speak. Where's the whole thing turning? <laughs> I see the nut turning over there. Yeah. <laughs> Foiled again. Tighten that assembly up so it doesn't turn. We try to grab another pair of ice grips on this. The the whole assembly's rocking back and forth, not the inner part. So the engine was straight back. That means it's kind of like in the neutral position. And this has the capacity of driving this way, you know, probably that much further to steer the engine all the other way. I think what we're gonna do is try taking a slide hammer. I'll get another bolt set up. We'll bolt it right to there and see if I can draw it this way a little. And if I can. That's usually like when the rust will expose on this end, we'll be able to get some fluids in it and, and try driving it back. So let me see how that works out for us. The other thing is I don't want to hammer on it this way too much and, and destroy the eyelet of this also. Right, let's see what we can break. Broke the bolt. That's Better than breaking other stuff, I guess. Mm. I'm not sure what we're going to do about this. I'm open to suggestions. I guess if we have to, we could take that sleeve right out of the center of it and pull the whole assembly out of it. And then, you know, of course, the engine's going to be hanging. because It's going to have no pivot support in the center. And then get the whole thing over and, like, heat it up on a vise or a press or... Kind of press it out of there. The other part is too, we're still connected to the boat. You know, the cable still kind of goes up around through the side around and up over the steering column. Worst case, we can get that out of there, but you know, rather not try chasing that stuff. Hmm. Yeah, if we can get some lube on this side, let's go try taking, I don't know it's going to do anything now. And that's really not what our issue is. It's, yeah, take the nut off, it's just going to expose those threads. It's not going to do anything for that. This, this right here, I'll actually just get that crap out of our way. Whatever that bit of wicking is, and we'll see if we can get some fluid in there. Be nice if... Like that is just a seal stuck in the end right there. We can get that out of a can't even see. Get that seal. Maybe this is a seal right here. I think it's not that. I think it's just the end of the threads. That's all that crap. Yeah, if that was a seal, would be awesome, but I don't think so.
Well, I've come to the conclusion and somehow we got to set it up in a press to get it out of there. It is just so it's seized inside there. So this has to come out of the middle. And again, that's what's holding the whole motor in place. But there is a couple of holes that looks like it can line up here in the trim. And we'll just throw a couple bolts in it and let it hang off the back of that for now. And I guess I maybe mean, we'll put a floor jack or something underneath it to keep it from, from doing one of those. That's good. I think we should probably run a strap up high too. One, again, the only place we're holding on to is right here. And this is the whole top is going to be free. So maybe we'll run a ratchet strap around the top to a couple of the hooks or something just to, to keep it from really wanting to go flip over the other direction. free that cable up from the body probably just because I can't get enough of a, a curve on it to get it up and out of there. Do I got to get a whole bunch of cable out out here to be able to work and flip it up or drive it right to that hole and that's not going to happen because it still has another there's another 10 inches in there yet that's going to bring it way out to here. We got to figure out how to get this cable free play. I think we cut a bunch of tie wraps going down the gunnel and get the cable to kind of move in this direction give us some work room see if that's enough to, for us to get it out of there i'm afraid that whole motor's gonna come crashing down though there we go so close we get so far there <laughs> now what i'm gonna do with it <laughs> Kind of wondering if we could heat this cylinder up. I don't. Again, I just don't know what's in there for any kind of seal or anything. Let's go. Let that fill up and soak down in there. Definitely puking out a lot of crap. Yeah, just if there's any kind of seals. You know, would there be though? Like, what would? So this diameter, I believe, goes inside here. So this is a cable that's in here. This is a kind of a jacket, I think, just holds it, just holds it from uh, maintaining going straight. There's cabling that goes in it. I think this travels inside here. But essentially, this is really not supposed to be sliding. That's all supposed to be clamped together. And this piece slides over this. This is sliding. Hmm. I guess we could try heat. What's it gonna, I mean, we're already screwed, right? The other thing possibly we could do, I wonder if we could drill some holes in it. Maybe even like right down here somewhere, drill a hole in it and get some penetrating fluid in it on the other side. Again, this is the, this is the side that it's bound on. I like the other thing too, possibly putting it in a press. If we can bring the press over here and kind of try to set it up in there and push off of it, if we can get enough room. I get the rest of the way, you know, out from under the boat. I wish machines would just understand that I am going to keep escalating the situation until either it breaks or it comes free. You must just give up now. All right, we got a press set up, got a cup on the bottom, a bushing, the nut that goes on that shaft, and then the shaft is pushing right up there. I got a bolt back in there to try to keep the hole from crushing on it. Let's go see what happens. Yeah, let's mark it again too, just so we have a, a visual. Moving. I 
<laughs> there she goes. Let's, uh, I moved it from the other side, but that's going to be going down into a dry hole, isn't she? <laughs> Probably gonna have to reset. I'm gonna run out of cylinder in a minute. Hopefully, this thing isn't egged out where it gets larger. It might be a little bit. I'm gonna go take a flapper disc real quick and just knock a little bit off. There's a little bit of a shoulder right here. I don't want that to get bound up going down in there. And, uh, you know, in the point of no return. Rather really take a couple of seconds now. Hopefully the last little push. Let's get it <laughs> Finally, you got it apart. That wasn't so bad now, was it? Yeah, let's go see what the major malfunction was there. Just right there, all that, all that crud that just built up on it. Right in that area. We can wire a wheel and clean that part of it out. Of course, you know, lube. Now, hopefully, when we turn the wheel, this travels on here without being bound up. So see if I can hold that. There we go. Good. So nothing wrong with the cable. Everything just bound up inside here, which we are going to clean thoroughly. And uh, same thing on that cable on the end of it. We'll clean up the end of that. You have to. We're on a reamer or something. Now you can see where the gets smaller ah <sighs> relief so it does look like the side that was bound up had an o-ring in it i think it just held all the water in i don't think it kept uh, crap out so now we gotta figure out how to rotor rooter that thing kerosene free lube Got a, a gun brush. The problem is I don't have the extension to add onto it. I guess we're just gonna have to work with what we got. I wonder if that's like a plastic bushing in there that's all mangled up, like this part right here. poke at it a little, see if it's got any flexibility to it. Well, I think it's metal. I think it's just all the rust that built up on it. Well, I'm going to do my best to work with this setup. I have to, I might even like weld a piece of rod or something onto that. There's something to work with. A quick little cleanup. Let's see what we get for Penetration. Is it like it was like that, wasn't it? It's a 
about halfway into it. I gotta come up with something. What if we could chuck it up in the lathe and kind of run a boring tool down the center of it, maybe? Oh, you can see how just how crappy it is in there. It's something more aggressive than a wire wheel, something that actually scrapes that deposits away. Actually, about. Make it that far. On the crappy side. Yeah, you got all the crap that's in there. That's more I like it. So I'm going to work that the next 20 minutes. That's a little smaller than the bore. Let's go make a little French tickler out of it. Give her a little something like that. There we go. And yeah, she's got some resistance. Like butter. Doesn't even have lube on it yet. Good. We can get to go grease all that back together. I'm going to put that O-ring back in. I'm going to pack it with grease before I even assemble it. And uh, bring you back when she's all back together. Hopefully I don't drop the motor off when I'm trying to reinsert that. Hopefully. With a little bit of wiggling, we can get that to go right back in. Nice. There's the other side. Let's give her a motor a little shake, I guess. There it is. Almost. Gotta go towards us. I'll get her. We're halfway there. Put it all back together. Who's he dead? That one didn't put up a fight at all. No, did it? Well guys, I think this is going to be a good jumping off point. I still want to go back and bleach all that, get rid of all that crap that's growing inside there and do the same to the to the bottom of the tank, but I ran out of bleach, so I gotta run to the store. And I'm gonna go call it. So I'm gonna go wash that out. I'm gonna put a gallon of gas in the bottom of the tank too and kind of let it slosh around for a while. And I got some stuff to do for the next couple of days. So we'll let that stuff do its thing and then we'll pick it back up from there. We got pretty far. We got educated at what it's going to do. We know that the engine's going to run. I don't know how well. We do know it's going to run. We got all the crap cleaned out of it. 60% of the stuff works electrically. <laughs> I got to get some batteries for it. Uh, some house batteries on the other side. And then the, uh, the main one for running the motor on this side. And uh, I have to go chase them tomorrow. Today's, today's Sunday. Nothing's really open. So with that, guys, I'm going to go sign off. I want to thank you for uh, having a little bit of fun and uh, bringing this uh, bad boy back to life. Definitely cleaned up well, didn't it? Too bad about that seat. I may try dropping that off and see if they can just upholster something in the center of that. Right there. Maybe we just get a fix on that because the rest of it looks fairly decent. I don't care if it doesn't quite match. We'll throw a towel over it. <laughs> All right, guys, with that, I'm going to go sign off. Again, thanks for hanging out and doing a little bit of wrenching. Hopefully a little bit of fishing pretty soon. Till the next one. I'll see you. Bye. So is it a free pile or are they for sale? Hmm. The sign would probably be helpful.